Can everyone hear me? Oh, okay, hello. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Katie Miller, and we are from Anderson University. Uh, and uh, I am the president of the of our Upsilon chapter in Anderson. Hi, my name is Michael. I'm the outreach coordinator for the uh, uh, Upsilon chapter at Anderson University. Um, and today we are going to be talking about our outreach program, or our scientific awareness project. Um, Concordia did a great job of explaining how they really impacted their community and our program is really similar. Um, however, we specifically focus on reaching out to the homeschool community, uh, and we have our, the students come to us. So, uh, yeah. Also, this is a, our fundraiser, our primary fundraiser for the year. And not only do we raise funds, but fun as well. So in case you didn't know where Anderson University is, we are located just 45 minutes north of here in Anderson, Indiana. And there's a picture up there of our science building, and this is where our outreach program occurs every year. And this is a lovely picture of our current officers. <laughs> so uh, right now, Sigma Zeta Upsilon Chapter has about 44 members, and we represent seven different majors at Anderson University. Uh, also, we have elected officers, probably similar to y'all. Um, we have a president, a vice president, a secretary, treasurer, and outreach coordinator. Uh, so something really interesting about AU is that our Sigma Zeta chapter has been around for 70 years. This is our platinum anniversary. Uh, so this is really cool, actually, for us personally. At homecoming, we meet a lot of people who are alumni at Anderson, and it's sort of fun, uh, because sometimes we'll meet people that were part of Sigma Zeta like 50 plus years ago. Um, that's a really neat connection that we have. And also, this is the 10th anniversary of our outreach program, which we're going to be talking about today, more specifically. So I'm going to jump back 10 years ago and sort of tell y'all how this program started. So first of all, why did Anderson University want to reach out to the community? Um, first of all, Sigma Zeta really wanted a way to get members involved. We didn't want our program to be something that was just something to put on your resume. We wanted it to be something that had purpose and that students could really be a part of. Um, so we want it to be something that encouraged scientific and mathematical awareness in the community, that instilled a love of science in young kids, was a good educational experience, and also maybe allowed some of the students to get a feel for what a college campus was like and what some um, college-level labs were like. Um, and so actually the first program that we started uh, was aimed towards high school students. So we reached out to some of the local high schools, and we were going to have uh, what we called Science Days, where high school students would come during Saturdays. And while uh, Science Days sounded really fun to a lot of the Sigma Zeta members, uh, I guess the high school students didn't think that it sounded quite as cool. So we didn't get a great reaction from that, and that program fell through. However, in 2006, there were some homeschool parents who reached out to AU. Uh, they were looking for ways to get their students more involved in science, and so uh, Sigma Zeta thought that would be a really good niche for us to work with. And so 10 years ago, in the fall of 2006, our outreach program began. Uh, they decided that it would be an eight-week program where uh, Sigma, Sigma Zeta would hold lessons once a week for homeschool students, uh, and just during the spring semester. So during the fall semester, members worked to pick student teachers who would teach the lessons and work on the curriculum. Also, they needed time to make sure that they got the logistics and legalities worked out. And so, first of all, if y'all are interested in launching a program like this, most of the time, uh, marketing is very important. However, since the parents came to us, this was less of an issue. We really um, had the demand there, and so we just needed to communicate really well with the homeschool community. And we did this primarily by email, um, and we still do that today. So uh, just the co-ops in the area, uh, we have a close line of communication with them. Also, they had to draft all the first forms for the liability waivers and stuff. And I believe that one of the students at the time had a father who was a lawyer who uh, helped us draft these and make sure that they were professional. Also, we got approval from AU administration and the Dean of the Sciences. Uh, we wanted to make sure that this was a good program and that we were putting Anderson University in a good light. And so that was 10 years ago, and today this program is still up and running. Um, marketing and communication is very much the same by email, 
Um, the facilities and forms, the forms are still very much the same. Uh, we update them for each year, of course. And then member involvement. We have to get sh make sure that we have plenty of students who are willing to help out and have a passion for teaching science. And so this really is a fun event for us. We love interacting with the younger kids, uh, teaching them about things that we're excited and passionate about. And the kids are really excited about it, too. I think that they really look forward to it. Michael will talk about some of the positive feedback that we've had. Um, but yeah, these kids are so smart. Sometimes they outsmart us, and it's so much fun to work with them. Also, uh, we do charge registration fees, and this is our primary fundraiser. And we use this to go out and do other um, projects in the area. We sometimes uh, will do meals at the Ronald McDonald House, um, work with other uh, social groups and clubs on campus. Also, we need to buy supplies for the program, make sure that we have awesome lessons and things for them to learn. Um, and then uh, scholarships for our students. And also, uh, this gives us an opportunity to send some of the same data students to events such as this one. So the funds that we've raised um, have allowed us to come here. Also, we feel that this program really does align with Anderson University's values. AU has a mission of preparing and educating students to send them out to use their skills in the world to um, impact the community and serve others well. And so uh, now Michael, who is the homeschool coordinator, is going to talk a little bit more in detail about this program, uh, just in case y'all are interested in starting something like this in your own schools. Uh, Michael has worked really, really hard to make sure that this is a good program for our students. And so, thank you, Katie. All right, well, Katie mentioned it. I'm the homeschool coordinator. And, whoops, let's get back there. Oh, come on. I think it's stuck. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Well, um, as Katie said, I'm the uh, outreach coordinator, and what I did was I kind of oversaw a lot of the operations, kind of put together some of the logistics, kind of um, just oversaw the homeschool program as it uh, proceeded throughout the year. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a little blueprint of how our program works, just to give you an idea if this is something that you guys want to pursue on your own campuses. So we begin our year in the fall semester by reaching out to area communities. Um, uh, I have a long list of just parents and families who have been interested in the past, so I sent out basically a mass email just letting the parents know this is something we're doing again this year. Uh, also our faculty advisor, Dr. Scott Cards, and his family are very active in the homeschool community, so they're very, very good about getting the word out through sending emails just by word of mouth, so that's how we kind of garner some interest. Um, and something cool that we realized this year is our outreach is larger than we initially thought. Um, just in that, in the past, we always kind of catered to the um, Anderson community of homeschoolers, just the homeschool forums are kind of uh, Madison County. But we realized that some families are traveling 40, 45 minutes to come to our program. So that meant a lot to us that people were willing to take the time um, and sacrifice the time out of their day and make the commitment to come to our program every week. So um, again, we begin preparations during the fall semester. Um, we also have our induction ceremony during that time. It's where a lot of our new members, we let them know this is something that they can do if they want to teach, if they want to help, whatever capacity they feel um, comfortable in helping with. Um, that's something we let them know about. And we conclude with our eight-week program taking place during the spring semester. It um, begins a couple weeks after school in January and accumulates um, and ends in the middle of March. So um, right before our spring break, and that was just a couple weeks ago. How time flies. Logistics, so the cost, it's about $20 for the uh, first student with $5 for each additional student. Um, it's a pay one sort of thing, so for the entire eight-week program, that's the only cost. Um, we feel this is very affordable, but again, you guys can kind of tailor that to however you want. Um, upon getting those forms, we uh, divide the students up into two age groups. Second and fourth graders is the younger kids. Fifth through eighth graders is the older kids. Um, there are 16 lessons total, eight lessons for the older kids, um, eight lessons for the younger kids, with one going each week. So there'll be a lesson for the older kids, a lesson for the younger kids each week. Um, one hour in the afternoon, um, what we did this year were Thursdays from 4 to 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, this just seemed to be a time that worked well for the families as well as us um, as students. So again, that was important. 
Subjects, so with our homeschool parent program, we really try to emphasize uh, Sigma Zeta's core curriculum with the lectures that we teach um, and the activities. So biology, chemistry, physics, those each get four lessons, while computer science and mathematics each, each get two. Um, now I'm going to uh, just give you a little overview of some topics we presented on in the past that we've had a lot of success with. Um, you can read off of there, but something we've always had a lot of success with is dissections. Kids just love pulling things apart. Um, so, uh, something that we did this year that we had a lot of success with was the brain. We brought in some sheep's brains, and um, they just really enjoyed that. Uh, just using the lab tools, little probes and the tweezers with the, you know, the helper's help, and just kind of following along, learning about the different structures of the brain, how the brain works together, um, the different parts, and how it functions as an organ as a whole. So, that was cool, and they really enjoyed that. And there's kind of a picture that's our biology laboratory. You can see the homeschool students um, and the college students interacting. You can see some dissection trays. And that was actually a frog that they did that day. So again, very cool stuff. On to chemistry. Um, again, some topics we've included in the past. Um, this year we did polymers. As you can see, this boy is very excited uh, holding his newly made uh, slime polymer. So um, they got to color it whatever color they wanted. So this boy chose red, but again, just learning how things link together and can make a bigger structure as a whole. Um, again, making interactive is uh, our primary goal with this and really leads to a more effective lessons. So that's something that was really cool as well. Uh, there you can see, here's another example. Here's a homeschool student um, working on acids and bases. You can see kind of right there, over there, um, acid and base uh, indicators. They're working on some kind of titration sort of things and learning about pH. So again, just really keep me interactive and let them handle the science with helpers being right there to help if necessary. Onward to uh, physics, some topics we've included. Something that we had a lot of success uh, with uh, this year, and something probably the most successful lesson that we had was um, Angry Birds and implementing that with projectile motion. So while the kids really love playing Angry Birds, they also love setting up the actual Jenga blocks and launching projectile birds and, you know, kind of calculating the velocity and the angles and the distances. So knocking over the pigs and using the birds and setting up the Jenga blocks was something that the younger kids really enjoyed doing. So, again, very good lesson there. And really just making it interactive, just, you know, <coughs> stating that over and over. That's one of the things that really makes it successful. Onward to computer science. This is probably the one that uh, the most interest is gaining on as far as our program is concerned, just because kids really love computers and that's kind of, you know, kind of up and coming. Um, it's something that we get the most positive feedback of what kids want to learn about because kids are getting really good with computers. Um, something that they've done this year, uh, they did coding and programming. Um, I'm no computer science major, but I know one thing that they did was a JavaScript program. They kind of worked on like a program, like a gaming sort of thing, and they were told only make it to level 5, you know, the time we have available, you know, you don't have to go past. Some of them were getting to levels 18 and 19 in the 50 minutes they had. They were surpassing a lot of the, you know, the college students, you know, who aren't computer science majors, but they're college students. So these are very smart kids that we're working with here. It's very satisfying just to see them do so well at something new. Uh, onwards to math. Um, again, um, distance formula, volume. You can see in this picture what they're working on is they're uh, working on calculating volume. Um, and both the lessons these years, this year had um, education uh, majors teaching. So people who wanted to have careers teaching uh, math or science, uh, this is something that our program tries to implement for education majors. It's a way for them to get credit, you know, just teaching credit if they need it, just teaching math or science to a different age group or the age group that they're comfortable with. Um, so again, that's an option for them to pursue if they want it. Um, critiques. So um, we're very proud of our program. We had a lot of success there as a result, but there are a few things that we've learned. This is kind of a growing process for us and a work in progress progress. Um, one thing is encouraging participation just because um, life as a college student is very busy and being a science student, I'm sure as you all know, is no exception. Um, so at times there are rough lessons just due to lack of preparation or you know lack of gathering supplies, but a way to avoid this was just getting the lesson plans done early and you know turned into the faculty advisor, Dr. Carr, and getting approved or to just keeping constant communications and just kind of staying aware of it. Um, also maintaining student interest, um, just keeping age-appropriate topics. You know, uh, science is a massive field, and you know there's topics of varying intensity. So if you're going to teach a lesson to second and fourth graders, you probably don't want to teach about enzyme kinetics and the Michaelis Menten plot. I'm just throwing it out there. That's something that usually doesn't resonate very well. Um, also hands-on activities. I reiterated this throughout the presentation, but just making it hands-on for someone, giving them something to work with. Um, and remembering the little things, just like supplies, sometimes we have a lesson all put together, but we just forget to have pens and pencils. So just remembering the little things in that, 
And how is this addressed? Basically just by keeping open communication, sending out emails, you know, after class just mentioning it, letting people know about a week in advance or a couple days in advance, hey, you're on, so uh, whatever we can do to help you get prepared or uh, help you along with the process, just let us know. Successes, so again, uh, we're very proud of our program. Um, and uh, we're introducing students to the sciences um, and the college campus and the laboratory, which we think is good all around. Um, uh, just speaking as a homeschool student, I didn't get a lot of background in science until I came to Anderson University. So just to be able to try and foster an interest in STEM in these students at a young age is something we think is very beneficial. Also, um, just getting them the exposure to a college campus and a laboratory with these being homeschool students, a lot of them are just happy for a chance to get out of the house. Um, and something that um, we uh, realized as we kind of look back over the literature through our program is um, this is actually a pretty effective recruiting tool for us. Not that that's the motive, but um, just looking back through the pictures, we saw a lot of uh, homeschool students who had participated in our program who had gone on to actually attend Anderson University and either pursued a, you know, a, a major in sciences or some other department. So that was cool to see as well. Parent feedback, so something, this is what we do at the tail end of the year, just kind of wrapping up our program. We send out emails to the parents, just you know, asking for some feedback. You know, what can we do better? How can we improve? And as you can see, we get a lot of positive feedback from that and some good suggestions. So that's what kind of helps us improve and grow and develop the program. Um, if you're interested in starting with this, um, just starting this on your own campus, there's some contact information up there for uh, Sigma Zeta Upsilon. That's just their email. Um, our faculty advisor, Dr. Carr, he's, um, very active in this. He's been doing this on our campus for 15, 16 years, so he has a lot of knowledge um, pertaining to this. Also, I was the outreach coordinator for this program this year, so if you have any questions, um, shoot me an email or talk to me afterwards. Uh, I'd be happy to give you any ideas of just how you can do this and make this uh, applicable on your campus. Um, and so with that, I'd like to hand it back over to Ms. Katie Miller. Okay, I just wanted to say thank you uh, to the Sigma Zeta Honor Society for hosting this event. Also to Marion University, uh, we really appreciate being able to come and share a little piece of our Sigma Zeta experience with you. Uh, also, I'd like to thank our advisor, Dr. Scott Carr. He really has put a lot into this program uh, and made it a really huge part of our program. Uh, also, I'd like to thank some of the other officers who put a lot of work into this as well. Uh, primarily our secretary, Jessica Moore, who did tons of work on this PowerPoint. Um, yeah, but this is just a really special part of our program, and we are happy to share it with you. Does anyone have any questions for us? So, what's your average attendance in these um, So, it fluctuates from which we do to availability, but oftentimes for the older kids, we have about 15 to 20, and the younger kids was a little larger, about 25 to 30, but it really varied from which we, depending on what the kids <coughs> were doing. Do right back there. For the um, kids that you have come back each year, do you do the same topics but change the lessons, or do you have different lessons each year to keep teaching the kids new Lessons, so. Gotcha. Um, so I think I understand the question, but we do, we keep uh, teaching uh, Sigma Zeta's core curriculum, but we find different lessons within each field. So as far as just like biology is concerned, you know, we could do a dissection like last year, it was a, you know, we had a cow's eyeball, and then, you know, next year, so I mean, we did a brain, so I mean, we try to keep it interactive, but we find different topics from the year. I mean, we, we try not to recycle everything, we try to keep it fresh, so. We actually, um, yeah. We actually uh, have the students, the Sigma Zeta members who are interested in teaching, choose the lessons. So they get to pick something that they're interested in and then run it by uh, Michael and whoever the homeschool <coughs> coordinator is to make sure that it's something that will go well. So. <coughs> you open back? Do you guys have any intention on like, uh, spreading out your program to high school students? Do we? Um, I don't know, I think that's something we have to consider in the coming years, but um, I don't know, I'd have to talk to, I guess, our faculty advisor. Um, we tried it in the past, and sometimes it was a little bit difficult just trying to teach them, just because the age gap is so close to each other, teaching something that they didn't know. But, I mean, I think it'd be a little bit more difficult, but I don't think we'd shy away from it. We'd definitely consider it. 
Yeah. I'm not going to use this. I'm loud enough without the thingy. <laughs> Love the accent, by the way. Yeah. I don't have an accent. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to kind of bring this up. I think everyone else in the room does. Uh, anyway, uh, one thing, we've also worked with some of our education students and given them credit for it. Uh, one thing we've tended to find is for a lot of those kids, the weird thing is they really don't want to be at our kinds of events. And we find that the science students themselves, the, the, science, the STEM majors, are more passionate than the education majors. Do you find any kind of difference in attitudes between the two different groups? Um, I would say we all find a whole lot of difference. Um, Might just be our STEM, our teachers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd say the, pra the passion for teaching is pretty well around. I think usually education are actually a little bit more passionate than the science students, if I had to, if I had to you know, say. But I mean, it's, it's not noticeable. But I'd say sometimes even the education majors are a little bit more passionate about teaching. And they really jump on the opportunity. And have you considered, you know, once you're developing these materials as well, and you're talking about cycling through a library of things, have you considered putting that out there and putting it out there into the network, the homeschooled network? We ran kind of a program as well, and part of one of the goals I had in doing it was to write this up and then just throw it, throw it out there for people to have. Gotcha. Um, no, that's actually a really good idea, just sharing it with everyone. Something that we did do that a parent suggested last year was just ensuring, uh, using handouts, uh, just giving the kids a handout to take home at the end of the lesson. That way the parents had an idea of what they learned for the day, and that way the parent could kind of continue teaching on. Like, if they learned about friction one day, the parent could kind of continue with that uh, and teach them that at home if they wanted. But that's a good idea, sharing it with like the forums and stuff. So I think well, that'd be beneficial. That's yeah, a good idea. The, the forums, and especially things like the setup, what you need and stuff like that. There's lots of examples of cool experiments out there. But one of the things, especially, you know, a lot of our sage knowledge is still kind of locked up in our heads. And that one of our goals over the next year is really to start putting that out there on the internet and trying to just get it out so that other people can make it a lot easier to adapt. And it sounds like with the lesson plans and stuff that you guys are developing, it shouldn't be that hard to just kind of write stuff down as well, build your you know chapter archive of outreach, and then for someone who's maybe three hours away and wants to do these kinds of things at home, information's there. Yeah, or they could utilize it as another resource. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's a great idea. I never really considered that. Thanks. It's, it's good.